Today we're cooking a bunch of Japanese dishes in Japan. My family and I are doing a cooking class with Yayo who lives in Osaka. She's gonna be teaching us how to make okonomiyaki, takoyaki, and so many more dishes. If you don't know what those are, that's okay. I'll explain each dish as we go. I'll be sharing some of the things I learned through her class. Of course, it's not quite the same as doing it in person, so if you have the chance to visit Osaka, see if you can do a cooking class with Yayo. We're actually cooking in Yayo's home, which was big enough to hold me and my family, which was six people. My brother decided to stay behind to go shopping. We started with a nice hot cup of tea, and then it was time to get started on the miso soup. A lot of Japanese meals start with miso soup, and it's made by mixing miso paste with dashi, which is a type of broth. She showed us how tough it was to shave bonito flakes, so she recommended we just buy it from the store, just like other Japanese home cooks do. To make dashi, you're gonna need a lot of bonito flakes and kombu. Bonito flakes are those thin flakes, they're shaved from dried fermented fish, and kombu is a type of seaweed. Once the dashi is made, I learned that you're supposed to turn off the flame before you add your miso paste. This makes sense because when I make miso soup at home, I would boil it in the broth and it's just not as good. And get this, Yayo's mom made this miso paste. We were able to try it a little bit before she put it in the soup. It tasted so fresh, a little bit sweet, and it was so easy to eat. And then we moved on to the next dish. Taiyaki are fish-shaped pastries typically filled with red bean paste called anko. This is a very popular snack that I've seen even here in the US, and I'll be honest with you, I think I've yet to have a really good taiyaki. To me, it's just like pancake with red bean inside, which isn't bad, but I was hoping it would be crispy, crispy on the outside. Unless it's supposed to stay soft. If you're a taiyaki super fan, let me know what the texture is supposed to be like. Regardless, the batter that Yayo made still tasted great and had a little bit of the crisp on the outside. Not too sweet, which is great because uncle can get really sweet. Next dish. This is Osaka style. Tokyo style add lots of sugar. So not very, very good. sweet. Yeah, no good taste. So no, no sugar yes, in, no in sugar. Osaka? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So We're making dashi yaki, which is a rolled omelet. It's similar to tamago yaki, but dashi yaki includes dashi in the egg. Yayo was mentioning that this is Osaka style, which means it won't be sweet, unlike Tokyo style. My family was happy not to get that extra sweetness in there, but I don't mind either type. As long as it's not like super crazy sweet, I like it. Tell me in the comments if you prefer it a bit sweet like in Tokyo, or you want it just all savory like in Osaka. So this egg is seasoned with dashi, soy sauce, and mirin, which is kind of nice because it makes the volume of the egg much larger. Now it's time to roll, and everyone in the family is participating. Yayo did teach us how to roll up the omelets with chopsticks. She said you could use the spatula that she provided, but my family is very competitive. We're not gonna use the spatula. You got this, Doug, you got this. Whoa! Whoa. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yes, let's go! Hey. Oh, so, so cute! Yeah. <laughs> and let's see Hi, who does it better. Cool. <laughs> yeah, she looked like this, isn't she? Layers. Yeah, just to Perfect. pull it off the edges. Wow. 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 It's so proud of everybody. First time I like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> What's crazy because this was just one egg. Oh, man, then Yayo shared this sparkling sake that was made by her mom. Her mom's kind of cool. This is where we learned that sake actually just means alcohol in general in Japanese. The sake that we Westerners know is specifically called Nihonshu. If you're enjoying this video and want more like it, hit subscribe because I have a bunch of other food and travel videos that you may enjoy. Okay, next dish is okonomiyaki. This is a savory Japanese pancake that may look different depending on the city you're eating it from. Yayo is grating yama imo, which is a mountain yam. It's super slimy like okra and adds fluffiness to the batter. For Osaka style okonomiyaki, we're mixing in all the ingredients together. Yayo says build it as you like, so feel free to add as many toppings as you prefer. Here we're using cabbage, tempura bits, pickled ginger, and an egg to bind it all together. As she mentioned earlier, she's chosen pork for this dish, but you can use whichever protein you want. My mom is gonna skip out on pork, but Yayo was so sweet and pulled out shrimp just for her. As I mentioned earlier, there are different types of okonomiyaki depending on the region. There's some with noodles, others use green onions, and some are stacked pizza style. Osaka style uses a lot of cabbage, and as you saw earlier, jumbled together before grilling. Each of my family members is gonna be making their own based on how they like it, so ours is all gonna be different in some way. I like a ton of ginger and tempura bits in mine. Tell me how you'd build yours, cause if my brother was here, there was no way he's putting any ginger near his okonomiyaki. 
Once you're done mixing everything together, time to grill them on preheated surfaces. I'm so worried I won't be able to flip mine successfully because I think I've put way too much cabbage to batter ratio. Take note, Yayo's instructions say not to press down on the okonomiyaki while cooking. And I think this is so that it doesn't end up dense. Once we're done, we drizzle okonomiyaki sauce on top. If you've never tried it, I think it kind of tastes like a mix between barbecue sauce and Worcestershire sauce. QB mayo. QB. And if you've never had QB mayo, it's so creamy and slightly sweet. It's the one mayo we keep at home. Then the okonomiyaki is topped with more bonito flakes and a type of dried seaweed. Check this out, the bonito flakes look like they're dancing in the heat. Now it's time for each of us to plate our okonomiyaki and top them as we like. At this point, we're sitting down and enjoying the miso soup we watched Yayo make earlier and enjoying the okonomiyaki. We already got a full meal going on here and we completely forgot that we're only halfway through our cooking class. Our next dish is takoyaki, not to be confused with taiyaki. Maybe you've seen this pan before? Oh. Oh, <laughs> takoyaki are grilled octopus balls. It's made by pouring batter in a takoyaki mold like you see here and filled with bits of boiled octopus. Then it's topped with similar ingredients as okonomiyaki, the tempura bits, and pickled ginger. You'd want to use this takoyaki pick to scrape the batter free off of the edges of each ball and start flipping them over. Okay, at first everything looks like a horrible disaster, but just trust the process. And Yaya also says to keep flipping so they can keep their shapes round. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I flipped okay. it. Okay. Oh god, oh god, what have I done? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay, that's kind of hard. It's yeah. kind of hard, huh? Some were definitely easier to flip than others. I learned that letting each one kind of cook a little bit allows them to set, which makes them a lot easier to flip. I don't know how those takoyaki vendors make this look so easy. But again, trust the process and they'll eventually look like perfect little spheres. Yayo brings out the same toppings we used for okonomiyaki and place them on top of our takoyaki. That thick, sweet and salty sauce and dried seaweed flakes. So takoyaki is traditionally made with octopus, but in Japan, you can find a variety of different types. One night in Osaka, we ate at takoyaki park, which has a bunch of different types. Some were dry, some were filled with cheese or beef, and others were dipped in a sauce like ponzu. It was nice to try all the different variations, but we all agreed that we liked the classic takoyaki the most. You know why? It's that sweet and salty sauce. It's so addictive. Yayo packed the rest of the takoyaki for us to eat later, which we ended up giving to my brother for late lunch. We're in the final stretch and my stomach needs to stretch. Now she's teaching us how to whisk up plain matcha to eat with our taiyaki that she made earlier. It's the fish-shaped pastry with a sweet red bean paste inside. I'll be honest with you, I usually have matcha lattes. I'll whisk up my matcha in very little water and then I'll add it to hot oat milk and maple syrup. I've never willingly made just plain matcha until today. Yayo recommends two scoops using the bamboo scooper, then use a bamboo whisk to whip it up. You whisk the matcha in a little bit of hot water in an M or W shape to make it nice and frothy. This part's kind of fun. The result is a slightly bitter tea, but not too bitter. The flavor rounds out and I get this nutty aftertaste. It's really good paired with something sweet, like taiyaki. Or you can try it with another dessert that you like, kind of like you would with coffee or tea. I've made this multiple times at home now. I don't know what took me so long. Just plain matcha, good matcha, is actually really, really good. Look at you, duck a job. Can I see it? Mm -hmm. Wow, look how beautiful. You did such a great job. So frothy. Wow. 
This experience was so special and my family and I cannot stop talking about Yayo. She was so kind and welcoming and we learned a little bit more about Japanese culture and food because of this class. If you ever want to take her class, just Google cooking class Yayo Osaka and you should be able to find her. See if you can find the review that I left for her too. As if the class wasn't cool enough, as a cherry on top, at the end of the class, Yayo had souvenirs for us to take home. That was so fun. Thanks for joining us. I hope you were able to get some valuable takeaways from watching this video. If there are some dishes that you want us to make together here at home, let me know. And of course, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet so we can see each other more. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!